Hey everyone, Plaid Hat Games sent me Komonots, so let's get it to the table. Komonots is the second game from Jerry Hawthorne, where you will be exploring Dr. Martin Strubble's mind as he is in a coma. His invention was supposed to change the world and provide unlimited clean energy, but something has gone wrong as his invention malfunctioned and is now threatening to consume the world. The only way to fix things is to get Dr. Martin Strobel back by reviving him from his coma through his subconscious. You will race against time and work together as a team to uncover what lies hostage in Dr. Strobel's mind. You'll be playing the role as many different characters and changing between them to unlock the secrets of each world locked inside the Doctor's minds. Free him before it's too late. This game is for two to four players and uses the same mechanics as Stuffed Fables except now in a whole new light. Again, this game is a cooperative game and you will work together as a team to reveal information and perform tasks that will help you eventually know what location you need to go to defeat the prime inner demon to win the game. If you don't have enough clues or you're not sure where you should go, you will have to pick a new coma zone area to visit to gather more information to know which of the locations is the final locations to defeat the inner demon. You'll be able to play the game as individual sessions or in a campaign mode as you will get more and more of the story each time you play. Each session will focus on just one of the inner demons that Dr. Strobel has trouble with. So here we have the game set up. As part of setup, randomly you will have five chromosome cards, each with a different ID entity listed on the bottom left of each one. You will decide which one you want to start in and turn the adventure book to that page. There are five different locations you might be traveling to, gaining clues and finding out which one of those locations will have the prime ID entity that you need to defeat to win. Each of these locations have a story to go with it and somehow has affected Dr. Strobel. This deck here is the Vital Sign deck. The Flatline card is located on one of the bottom three cards. This is your timer in the game as you will need to find the Prime ID Entity before Dr. Strobel flatlines. This next deck is the Item deck. It contains items you might gain or use during the game. This deck has Totem cards which correspond with one of the five Coma Zones. From the five ID entities that you are randomly starting with, you will remove one showing your starting location and then randomly pick one of the remaining four. Without looking at it, you will find the numbers on the card and collect the five clue cards that match that number. This is the randomized prime ID entity that you will face off against. These clue cards will help you figure out what location to find the prime ID entity. These are the tokens that you will be using in the game. These are the status cards that can change each player's status during play that either give you benefits or hinder you in a certain way. This is the deck of potential hostile things that you might need to fight or go up against. Your player area will be set up with two random character cards placed face down and then you will choose one to start the game with and place that one on top of the other two cards face up. You will also start with three life tokens. You will read your character card and grab any items that it lists on it to start with. You will also take the default status card listed on the player sheet and place it face down. After setup, you will begin the game by reading the introduction to the starting coma zone. You will follow its further setup for that location, which will include adding tokens onto the board and placing your characters on the starting position. On your turn, you will draw five dice from the dice bag. The bag is full of dice of different colors, which all relate to different actions. If you drew any white dice, you will gain clarity. You will roll the die, and if the number is equal to or higher than the number of clarity that you currently have, you will gain a clarity token, and you will move that die to the discard pool. Clarity can help unlock character abilities, or it can be used to help re-roll dice. After checking the white dice, you will check if you rolled any black dice. The black dice with white pips on it will be added to the threat track. If your character is suspicious in the current location that you're at, then you will also add any black dice with the red pips to the threat track as well. If your character is not suspicious, then you will return the black dice with the red pips back to the bag. If your situation is hostile, then whenever there are more threat dice than enemies in play, return a previously defeated enemy to the spawn site listed on the map. In case you draw the transparent blue die, it'll be rolled and placed on the inner child spot on the sideboard. 
reveal a vital sign card, and if a stable sign is drawn, then nothing happens. If a critical sign is drawn, then check and see if there is a vital sign symbol on the right side of the adventure book and read it and do what it says. If it is a flatline card, then Martin has passed away and all players lose. You will also place the inner child standee on the indicated space on the map. When you move to this space, you will read the section and do what it says. This will be different in every coma zone. The remaining color dice will let you perform actions. Red dice help you with strength-based melee attacks. Green dice are for ranged attacks or agility-based tasks. Yellow dice helps you search or are used for smart space tasks. Blue is used for resistance space tasks. The purple dice are used as wilds and can be used for any action of your choice. Know that you can discard any two color dice to take any one color die from the discarded pool. To move, you can use any color die. No need to roll it. If there is a solid color line, then you will need to use the color of die or a purple die to move through it. Instead of using a die, you can always reserve it and place it on your player board to use for another turn. You can use the encourage a player action by giving them one of your dice to keep on their player board for future rounds. You can also spend any color die to move any number of items between your inventory or equip slots. If on the same space as another player, you can also share items. When finding clues and reading sections connected to the adventure, you will encounter skill tests. This will have a color and a difficulty associated with it. To do this, you will spend any number of dice of that color and you will roll them. And if the roll is equal to or greater than the target number, then you will succeed and resolve the success effect. At times, the situation might present a group task. This is similar to the skill test, except all players can contribute to the task. When attacking an enemy, you can perform a melee attack with an enemy in the same space as you. Roll any number of red dice. If the number meets or exceeds the defense number, then the enemy is defeated. The player who defeated the enemy can also loot it by gaining the items listed on the loot section of the enemy card. Similarly, you can attack with a ranged attack using the green dice. When located on a search icon on the map, you can perform a search action by using a yellow die. If the result is 4 or higher, the search is successful and you will discard the token from the map and find the item listed in the adventure book for that location. Know that you have 5 slots for equipment. After you use all your dice, you will check the threat level. If the situation is hostile and the threat dice equals or exceeds the number of enemies in play, the enemies will take a turn. If the situation is safe, and you have four or more threat dice, then you will trigger the effect listed on the side in the adventure book. After doing the threat check, it will be the next player's turn. Know that there is an order in which the enemy will take their turn if triggered. You will roll a die, and depending on the number listed on the card, you will perform the action which will involve moving, targeting, and or attacking. If you ever lose all your life force, your character will reveal a vital sign card and draw a Nyx character card underneath the current one. You will replace all items of your new character and place three life force tokens on it. You will need to stay alive long enough, work fast enough until you uncover which inner demon is the prime inner demon wrecking havoc on Martin Strobel and then be able to defeat it. If you like Stuff Fables, this game is similar, except this game is more challenging. It's great because you can actually lose. The threat from the hostiles actually push you to figure out something to do and move the story forward. Komonauts is just a great game that has a great story and narrative to it. There are 11 worlds, which some are real world events that happen to Martin, while others are worlds in Martin's imagination. I like how you really uncover many things about Martin by visiting these worlds and reading these stories. I like how you randomly will draw five dice and you are stuck with doing actions with those colors. If you needed or wanted different color dice, you are stuck with what you have and you will have to maybe change your strategy and do something different. Remember though, you are not stuck with those dice always. You can trade in two for a certain color in the discard pile. So you are still able to control some aspects of the dice. You also have the chance to prepare for a bigger and better round by keeping a die or giving dice to other players. There is some great teamwork in the game and some great decisions to be made individually as well as in a team. I like the press your luck aspect and rolling dice in the game. You can take your chance to roll one die, but your chances to roll a four or higher might be better if you roll two of the same color. But by doing that, you will have less actions. Do you press your luck and only use one die? 
Or do you play more cautiously and make sure this action gets performed and executed by using more? I like how you don't necessarily play as one character of the entire game. When you run out of your life force, you will be able to change to a new character, which always gives you new items, and you can play with this character differently than the one that you just had. Also, this way, when you run out of life force, you also aren't out of the game entirely. You will come back as a new character. It's really fun to run through these worlds and uncover information on what is going on and uncover surprises. There's just something about drawing five random dice out of that bag with so many choices and so many different colors and not knowing what you get or what you'll be doing this turn until you pull your hand out and see what colors you have. The game doesn't have a big heavy feeling to it and your decisions are still fun as you need to find out what to do with your dice, but your decisions are not complex where you take a lot of time thinking of what the best move might be. But the game is all about the story, making decisions with your dice to either move forward with what the story gives you or interact more with the elements that are presented to you. Again, this is Komonauts from Plaid Hat Games. If you like what you see, then go buy it.